Shanghai, but hopefully we can become the new NYC, right, with all connectivity across the uh, greater Mumbai region. And who better than Mr. Hiran Nandani as well as Anuj Puri joining in to talk about what this new Mumbai is going to look like and what kind of opportunities it throws up for not just real estate players, but all of us here as well. Uh, gentlemen, morning and Mr. Hiran Nandani, if I could come to you first, because you've literally seen the city evolve, right? Uh, for the past many years. Now with this recent facelift and the connectivity to Navi Mumbai in just a jiffy because of this new road, uh, help us understand what does it really do to the real estate construct of uh, you know, land banks at that side of the lake? Uh, thank you very much for joining. It's very exciting waiting for the Prime Minister to actually start the uh, start the uh, action and uh, open the bridge uh, on the 12th. And I think uh, it's going to be an exciting time for all of us. We've been waiting for this for almost 35 years because that's what the bridge was conceived and already designed at that point of time, but actually took a long time to get it implemented. Long and short of it is, what does it really do in terms of the Mumbai scene? Mumbai is highly congested. And it was time when we extended Mumbai to the suburbs, then we extended it to Navi Mumbai, and we now need to extend it further. The reason why we need to do it is because uh, that there is a demand for housing, there is a demand for infrastructure, there is a demand for social infrastructure, hospitals, schools, colleges, education, and the whole lot. So today, I believe that this is something which is going to create a paradigm for MMR. You're going to get enough land on the other side of the bridge, equivalent to half the land of Mumbai. So there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity for growth of Mumbai. Just like Gurgaon came from Nami Delhi, just like uh, Noida and Greater Noida came to Delhi, I think... Uh, this bridge is going to bring the entire Panvel region and right up to Kandala, uh, Lonavla and Karjat on the other side is going to make a lot of difference. So the entire uh, scenario in terms of housing, in terms of real estate development, infrastructure and the social infrastructure is changing. Of course, the major thing is next year, the Adani airport, Navi Mumbai airport is going to open. And I think that will be the next paradigm which is taking place. Anuj, hi, morning. Does that also spell higher real estate prices? Aisha, very good morning. Uh, you know, I did want to say one thing before I uh, get into that question is, and I echo Niranjan Bhai's uh, thought. Uh, you know, many years ago when real estate wasn't doing that well, uh, you know, I used to be sort of a little nervous getting on Nikunj's show, uh, maybe even breaching on being scared because real estate was really not doing well. You know, today, I actually, I wait uh, for Nikun's team to call me uh, on the show because, you know, it's like fantastic, uh, you know, everything that you look at it from, you know, the good quality developers, pre-sales. I heard what DLF said, uh, what Purvankara said, uh, you know, the unsold inventory going down, uh, you know, clearly end user demand. And that's why the collections are so high and, um, you know, the developers continue to buy uh, land. So, you know, hopefully uh, we will have this good momentum continuing. And on top of it, you have got new infrastructure uh, that's uh, come in. As Nikunj explained, you know, it is India's longest sea bridge. We are absolutely ecstatic and, you know, waiting for this to open. Um, also, Aisha, it is not only going to be just uh, Panvel and Ulwe, you know, it is going to be Karjat, it is going to be Kalyan, it is going to be Dombivili, Amarnath. Uh, you know, to our belief, it'll spread right up to Alibag that you will see that the price movement uh, is going to happen. I'm going to talk a little bit about price uh, as well, uh, Aisha, because if you look at any infrastructure globally, you know, whether it is uh, it is London, a new tube station opens up, the real estate prices goes up. Even if you were to look at India, you know, when Bangalore uh, from south of Bangalore, the airport moved to north of Bangalore, there was a rise of 50, 60 percent. Uh, prices when Hyderabad new airport opened within that vicinity and the corridor leading from the city uh, to the airport 50 60 percent prices um, you know escalated uh, I do feel as you're going to see a similar price rise in uh, in these areas on the real estate but I do want to put an asterisk on it and says look you know Bombay still remains pretty affordable my guess is that 15 years ago it was unaffordable 
today it is more affordable than what it was 15 years ago, despite the prices having gone up because large land parcels are getting opened up and there is a lot of real estate uh, in terms of residential that is coming up of good quality developers, which is very affordable. And given that this, uh, you know, MTHL is going to shorten uh, the timeline at least by an hour and a half, this connectivity will make sure that there is more affordable housing that comes up in these areas. Uh, Nikunj also joining in and Anuj Bhai, good morning to both uh, two as well. I'm going to address this question purely for a home buyer. So, so Niranjan Bhai, if one is looking at this as a classic opportunity where a new infrastructure is going to be changing lives, transportation will come down from two and a half hours to about two hours, then is it a good time to purely go and invest in the Navi Mumbai area? For folks who bought into, let's say, your construction in Thane or what is actually happening in Powai, 20 years ago, it was like an unknown area, but today it is becoming heart of the center. Do you see that same happening in the entire area of Navi Mumbai and Ulve where the bridge will terminate? You've taken words out of my mouth. You're saying exactly what I should be saying. <laughs> and uh, in reality, that is the truth. When we went to Powai, people said it was far away land and uh, hardly any infrastructure was actually developed in that area. See, when everybody is up... scared to come on my show, so I'm saying might as well preempt everybody with what the thoughts are. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the story, the story, the story is very simple. Wherever, as Anu just correctly put across just now, that wherever new infrastructure is developed, you're definitely going to see a growth in terms of demand first. That is more important, supply first. That is more important. And then price rise also, that is also important. All the three are taking place simultaneously. But you're going to get a lot of housing which is going to be made available in this segment at a price which is definitely one third, one fourth of the price, which is in the Mumbai city within 30 minutes distance of it. Today, if you're going to Lokanwala complex, the time taken sometimes is one, one and a half hours to reach there. While here, you'll be reaching in 30 to 45 minutes and, and driving at 100 kilometers per hour. So I think that is something which is really more significant, which is really taking place in across in this situation. So I do see a price rise. I do see a demand which is exponential. You're going to get a 5x demand. And yes, investors are already buying apartments in this area. So those people who had already seen it happening have been buying and will continue to buy as an investment opportunity. I think it's a great investment opportunity to invest into these areas. I think it's a great opportunity to invest. And I just wanted to get in a, um, a sense from you then, Anu, just to what the outlook is then when it comes to the price increases as well. Because um, at a time like this, when we are looking at this complete facelift, do you think that there is room now for further price increases? Aisha, absolutely. I, you know, the good thing is uh, what uh, the previous speaker from Purvankra, you know, he mentioned it, uh, that the developers have been very careful in this rally. You know, the greed versus fear has played out well. Uh, that fear is still on the topmost and hence they're looking at more sales, cash collection, bringing down the debt rather than increasing the prices. So leave, leave, leave that part out. But on just this infrastructure, MTHL, we think is that there is an increase of 50 to 60 percent uh, price rise that is going to happen to these areas that are going to get connected. Because what used to take one and a half, two hours is now going to take 30 minutes. So, you know, just from a common sense point of view only, there is going to be a huge rise in the prices. I think, as Narendran Bhai said, is many investors have already taken the benefit, but we still see is that there is a price rise from here onwards going forward over the next uh, one or two years. Niranjan Bhai, what about the reverse at play? And I'm using, again, a classic example of, let's say, what's happened to Nairman Point. BKC gets constructed. Nairman Point, in a sense, loses its charm. Can you imagine? I never thought I will ever use the line, Nairman Point and Kafpare losing its charm. But yes, sir, they've lost their charm. Do you think this same factor could be at play, that migration will happen to the other side of, uh, you know, the MMR? And there could be, in a sense, a little bit of price stagnation in this side of Mumbai. Uh, I don't think that happens overnight. 
but it happens over a period of time. But it also depends on how the infrastructure, how the building and the de development takes place on the other side. Today, for instance, if somebody was to shift their corporate head office to Panvel or that area, uh, they would probably wait for the airport to actually get operational. They would probably wait for substantial amount of construction to take place, sufficient amount of office space to be constructed. But surprisingly, instead of taking five to 10 years, it will probably happen within a period of two years. So I think that uh, what is Apologies. really Apologies.